On the line is Zach Roddy, one half fabulous Sydney country music duo, Zach and George. Good morning, Zach. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm going good. I'm going good. Thanks for having me on. Absolute pleasure, mate. Look, it's great to have you with us. Your wonderful four single sleep and it was released recently. Congratulations. Another great record from Zach and George. Yeah, thank you. That, that one's been um, in the pipeline for quite some time. So it's, um, yeah, it's really exciting to, to have it out and, and seeing, it, seeing it going as well as it is. As it is. Oh, that's fantastic, mate. Look, like your previous three singles, Sleep On It is an incredibly catchy song. You and George yeah. Goodfellow, the other member of Zach and George, co-wrote the song with Nicole Miller, of course. Can you tell us a little bit about the song, how it came about, and the inspiration behind it, mate? Yeah, so we were actually just in Nashville um, playing a writer's round and with, with a couple of mates of ours, and Nicole was mutual friends with those guys. And, right. Um, yeah, we'd never met Nicole before, and she sort of came up to us after after the round just after hearing his play and was like i really want to write a song with you guys and um yeah we're, we were very open like you want to write with everyone while you're there right. um do as much as you can so um yeah we, we booked it in um nicole actually had the idea to sleep on it and um had the chord progression ready to go and yeah i guess i guess that's how the song sort of came about it's just you know pretty generic you're sort of out on a night out and sort of get lost in lost with someone and you know you're not really sure whether you take the next step or play it cool and that, that's right. sort of the idea behind the song yeah fantastic mate look it's a great song and what about the official lyric video uh it was released recently too absolutely yeah. love it mate very sort of colorful but uh, certainly grabs your attention well what yeah, was, the, yeah, what was yeah. the thinking behind that i know that uh, the trend these days is for lyric videos but um yeah, yeah what, what was the idea behind that and who put it together for you yeah, so we came across this company from the US that was doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, just just through looking through a few of our idols on YouTube and what they've who they've used for their lyric videos. Um, oh. and, and so George sort of went to town on the colours a bit and sent them through what what we're sort of looking for. And um, yeah, that's what that's what they came up with, and we we're pretty uh, we we're pretty happy with it to be honest. Fant yeah. Fantastic, mate. And George is obviously a man of many talents. He's sort of uh, got that sort of artistic, <laughs> visual artistic sort of bent too, has he? Yeah, yeah, he's very driven. You know, once he gets set on something, you uh, yeah, you can't shake. He can't shake. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. Oh, that's good. But your yeah. previous three singles jump right in. Red wine and roses and Barstool really thrust you and George in the Aussie country music spotlight. Yeah, yeah. Look, Barstool yeah. in particular made a huge impression at this year's Tamworth Country Music Festival. Yeah, look, it, it's been uh, it's all happened very quickly, Anton. But yeah, so jump right in. We actually we recorded that during COVID. Right. Um, we recorded that virtually with with a guy that we met there. We were writing. We wrote another song with someone over there, and he he just did a demo one Friday with this guy. Um, and God, it sounded good. And we're like, "Gee, um, we'd love to do a couple of tracks with you when we come back." Right. And we never came back because of COVID, so we just sort of hit him up over email, and we ended up doing that one virtually. And we just did the vocals in Sydney. So that one that was interesting. That one, but. The other two tracks, and, and including Sleep On It, we did down in Melbourne. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, but yeah, look, Tamworth was amazing. Uh, it was such a great response from everyone. Obviously, you know, opening for James Johnson and, yeah, meeting his fans and sort of, yeah, Fantas it was great. Fantastic, mate. It was chosen, uh, Barstool was chosen to be the backing song for the festival's final promo video. Yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. what a great bit of recognition that is, mate. Fantastic. Yeah, that was huge. Uh, we were very excited about I that. Bet you were. I, I guess the um, the lyrics really fit that video. Video, which you know, you, you don't really think about when you're writing the song. You just sort of you're writing it from your own perspective and, and what you're thinking, you know. And then, it, yeah, yeah. Look, I think you hit the nail on the head. When I watched it, I thought these the lyrics suited beautifully. You know, the the occasion, brilliant stuff, mate. Yeah, thank yeah. You. and you mentioned James Johnson. Hit, we're on the same stage as James at the sold out show at Tamworth, of course. What was that like? It must have been fantastic. Oh, it, it was so professional, Anton. Like uh, he and he and his team are just so great. Um, Bo and look to have us on and and to be a part of something like that was just extraordinary. Just so early, early, so early on in the piece. Right. Um, James is James is just a weapon. You know, he's <laughs> a worker. Like he, they work so hard. And, yeah, the crowd, the crowd was crazy. You know, there was a big mosh pit there in front of us. You know, we weren't too sure whether they'd know our songs. You know, but you get up there and you play a few. Of course, they're not going to know all of them. Um, but then once we started playing Red Wine and Roses, uh, everyone was singing along, and it's not right. Seems to go go well with the crowd. 
um, everyone sings that part out. So fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was re really exciting. Ah, oh, that's great, mate. Look, and, uh, sleep on it hasn't been out very long, of course. But what about future Zach and George releases? Are there currently any plans there for further releases, a debut album, perhaps, or are jumping the gun a little bit? No, you're not jumping the gun at all. Right. Uh, Funny you ask, but we only had a meeting about that this week, and obviously Sleep On It's just going to radio now right. a couple of weeks ago, so we're just going to see how that sits, and then, yeah, we've got we've actually got a, um, an acoustic version um, that we're yet to release. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so we're looking at that, and, and of course, a couple of other songs that we've got in the pipeline, and, and then, of course, the trip to Nashville that could just, could shake everything up, you know, we could could land on a song that we're like that's got to come next so right. and then yeah and you've always got to plan you know you can't just i guess from from writing the song to getting in the studio then to you know sending it to the dsps it it doesn't happen overnight no so you do need to put a bit of plan in place but yeah that's sort of the rough plan at the moment oh uh, fantastic mate look i saw a post on the zach and george facebook page recently about you guys spending a day writing tunes with several other country music artists. Can you a little, give us a little bit of an insight into what that was all about? I'm guessing it sort of may have something to do with the future releases. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we're up in, um, we actually we did a gig up in Julia Creek, just near Mount Isa. Right. Um, the Dirt and Dust Fest. And, yeah, we are on our way back through Brisbane. And, and we caught up with, with Gavin Cartwright and uh, Carfoot and... Nolan and Jared Porter when we were in Tamworth right. at the Golden Guitars, and we'd written, we wrote um, Jump Right In with Jared, and he right. was like, and they've done a lot of stuff with James over the last year, and they were like, if you're ever up in Brisbane, let us know. Um, so we saw that as a pretty perfect opportunity to fly back through Brisbane and just stop in for the night. Um, so we spent the day in the studio with those guys, just writing a song, and we actually, we got an interesting one out of that one. We... We don't really, we don't usually write a lot about ourselves, you know, like we might write about a perspective or whatever. And um, that that was a really interesting one because Jared was like, you know, let, you guys haven't really got a song that's about you, right. and like you, your story. So, yeah, yeah so that, that's sort of what we wrote about that day. And, and hopefully we can get that one down. And Fantastic. Very soon. Yeah. Uh, uh, my able to give us a bit of a, an exclusive, mate, a title for it. Is there a title for the song? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can't, I can't give too much. Oh, okay, away. mate. Now, look, I ask that question all the time, and I, I keep me fingers. I totally understand. Look, we talked about with the gigging side of things, and in addition to performing at Tamworth, this year's been pretty busy for you guys gig-wise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, last month was particularly busy for you both. You did shows in your home state of New South Wales in Albury, Wagga Wagga, and Sydney. How'd those shows go? Yeah, they went really good. Um, you know, it was a tricky one. We were looking for dates, and... And Easter Easter weekend was was very available for the venues that we wanted to play. So right, we sort of bit the bullet there a bit. Um, so we did Sydney um, on Easter Friday on Good Friday, and you know I, I actually live in Sydney now, and right. the Sydney was very quiet. You know, so but to to get to get to the gig and have a packed room, it was um that was that was pretty exciting. And Brilliant. Then, Wagga was, was sold out on Easter Sunday, which is, yeah, it's interesting. It'll be interesting the next time we go around and, um, yeah, what it's going to be like when it is an Easter. But, um, yeah, it was great to, to get there. And we, we played a lot of gigs in Wagga and, and sung on the radio a bit um, a few years ago. Right. Sort of pre um, we were doing the covers circuit then. and um, So, yeah, it was great to see a lot of familiar faces. Ah, fantastic, mate. And you've got a gig tomorrow night in Queensland, of course. Uh, the Nebo yeah. Hotel Street Party. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. Why not? We haven't seen the Wolf Brothers in it since Tamworth, so it'll be good to catch up with those blokes. And, yeah, fantastic. Uh, and they're, they're on the bills, of course. Um, it's going to be a great night. Oh, it's going to, yeah. We're really looking forward to it, you know. Uh, it, it's really, it, it's so awesome that, that I guess my job these days takes me to different places around Australia right. that I've never been before, you know. For example, Julie Creek up near Mount Isa, like I've never been that far north. Right. Uh, you know, I've never been to Mackay, let alone Nebo. You know, so high <laughs> and jumping in a high car and driving in Nebo, it's just yeah, fantastic, cool. mate. Yeah, it's going to be a great night. I wish I was going, and hope to see you down here. Actually, in Southwest Victoria, it'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at that. Actually, um, we may have an announcement coming up next week. Great. With the show. Yeah, because the, the Wolf Brothers actually are playing in Warrnambool, which is uh, my hometown, uh, in August, which is yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, so we're really looking forward to that. 
Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah no, so- it'll be it'll be a good show tomorrow. Um, we'll get the band get the band together, which we don't we don't do a lot. So it, yeah, really looking forward to that and doing more band shows. Fantastic, mate. Look, uh, uh, when I was teeing up this interview, I was told that it needed to be before the twenty second of May. Look, and the reason for that, and we touched, you touched on it before, you're going to Nashville. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you and George are going for seven weeks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, incredible, mate. Can you, are you able to give us a bit of insight into what that's all about? I know you sort of touched on a bit of recording and that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, I guess, um, Anton, before before COVID and everything, George and I hadn't put out any music and we we wanted to write as many songs as possible before we sort of, and until we were happy with the songs we were writing and I guess... That's what Nashville was to us, right? Pre-COVID, but now as an artist, you know, there's, there's becoming there's a lot of pressure on you know, you know, putting more songs out and you know, writing more material, and and we just saw a gap in our calendar, and we we just couldn't wait to get back. So we actually had a mutual friend over there with a couple of spare beds, um, you know, which which is allowing us to stay there uh, for a bit longer which is um, really exciting. So, yeah, we'll just be writing, writing a lot, just catching up with everyone um, that we haven't seen in a few years. Um, we actually, we found out last week there's there's an event called, I think, um, Sounds Australia or a Taste of Australia. Right. So, yeah, we've been put on that night, which is oh, just Oh, okay. Like, Fantastic. Yeah, it's just yeah. Like a private, um, private showcase. Um, it's just free and, um, yeah, George and I will get the opportunity to play a few songs for everyone so fantastic yeah. mate look if we can talk a little bit about the history of zach and george for a moment if that's okay yeah yeah, yeah, look, yeah. when and how did you and george meet and uh and how did the wonderful country music duo zach and george actually come to be yeah so i guess we, we actually met in high school right uh, we've been best mates since we were 12 and okay uh, yeah it's sort of an interesting one like i actually grew up in lake Macquarie, so i right. come from a completely different background to george um who's grown up on the land um, you know, just in the Yass Valley, and yeah, so <laughs> it's quite a quite a, a weird friendship, I guess, if you look at our backgrounds. But you know, music sort of brought us together from day one, right? And yeah, mate, then it was so that, and that's what I was getting at with the song. You know, you're sort of writing about um, sort of your story and how you grew up, and you you know, you sort of forget all that, like, right? Yeah, yeah. So and. Which is yeah, I, I can't wait for that song to come out. It's but, what it was about, but yeah. fantastic. Yeah, look, and uh, I know this might sound like a silly question, mate, but um, what about the name Zach and Joy? Yeah, well, I tell you what, we, we had a couple of names in high school, you know, um, you know, undiscovered. Uh, <laughs> okay. you know, I think it was Pineapple Express at one point. So we, we we were playing with other 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 blokes, and we're like, you know, make like we had various bands that we had going on, right? Uh, and then. Yeah, just sort of when we were 17, 18, coming out of high school, like we, it, it just kept coming back to the duo. Like George and I were always, I guess, the the front, the face of, of the bands. And right. We, we were just always jamming, you know, whether they were there or not. And um, yeah, just being best mates, we sort of kept that going. And we were right into Simon and Garfunkel in, in year 12. We loved that. Right. Um, at the harmonies and... Yeah, the, the lyrics and everything, and we just sort of we, we were tossing up names. We did actually go on X Factor at one point. Um, we auditioned there, and um, we were called Zach and George by that point. And they were like, "Oh, you know, maybe maybe look at changing the name." And we've tried a few times, but we just keep going back to there was Dan and Shay. Um, the name didn't stop them. There was right. And it's just like that's who we are. We're Zach and George. Fantastic, you know? fantastic, mate. Yeah, looking. I was wondering how you actually. Um decided whose name should go first. Well, why, <laughs> why, why isn't George and Zach? <laughs> Did oh, you toss a coin or something? Was it sort of... Yeah. Uh... Um, I mean, you said it right there. Like, it just doesn't roll off the tongue. And, and just... that's exactly what I was <laughs> going to say. Zach and George sort of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? As opposed yeah. to George and Zach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zach yeah. and George. Fan- fantastic, uh, right? And, and what, before we let you go, what about your own personal music journey? Uh, Zach Roddy's own personal music journey. I mean, it's obviously... Um, pretty sort of intertwined with, with George's by the sounds of it. But what about the real, what, what are your memories of the really early days when you first started out? You know, when you first, when, when you first realised you wanted to be a country music star? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say country music. I guess well, a memory that does come to mind, I was, I was in primary school and I was on the back of a bus coming back from an excursion. And I, was, I reckon I was nine, it was probably year three. Um, and I wrote 
uh, I was just, you know, humming a humming a melody, and I, I wrote I wrote some lyrics down, and they didn't even rhyme. Right. And the next morning, you know, I was so excited about. It. I told my teacher and stuff, and she she got me up to sing to sing it for the class. And I I guess that that memory comes back to me, you know. And it'd be very embarrassing to watch that video if, if someone did capture it. But <laughs> where it started for me, and I, I was writing songs in primary school, you know, right. I chucked clips up on youtube that aren't there anymore but you know just about i don't know just making stuff up but yeah so that's sort of where it all started for me <laughs> fantastic mate yeah and um yes yeah, so i was always meant to be by the sounds of it such a young age you just... uh, yeah i've always been singing like my, my folks had me in um you know at a music school just just sort of just it was a bit like daycare i guess for me right uh, when i was from when i was three I, it was called do Ray me in in newcastle right uh, yeah, so I just I learnt like a few different instruments there and just learnt timing and singing in pitch and yeah, because I guess my parents are musically inclined, so that must be where it came from. Fair enough, mate. The child prodigy, I think, is what they referred to, mate. Is that is that what they? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. mate. Yeah, that's great. Look, thanks so much, Zach, for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Yeah, no, Anton, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And look, and uh, good luck with sleep on it. It's a brilliant song, mate. Much. Yeah, Thank and look, you. the gig tomorrow night in Nebo, Queensland, of course. So it sounds like it's going to be a great night. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. We'll, um, we'll get a quick rehearsal in tonight. Oh, okay. Like, the drummer, and then we'll, we'll jump on a plane first thing in the morning. Off you go. Fantastic, mate. And of course, uh, the upcoming trip to Nashville sounds fantastic, mate. Yeah, yeah, it'll be really interesting. We're actually, it's, it'll be the first time we're hiring a car, so... Um, great. That, that, yeah, I've driven a little bit over there uh, on the other side of the road, so I'm sort of used to it, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's that, isn't there? There'll be no stopping you, mate. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's really exciting. Okay, Zach. Thanks so much, mate. We'll have to catch up again soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Anton. See you, mate. Bye.